is a bad house. Hi, are you ready for an adventure? Welcome back to another little library box book exploration video. You guys have been requesting this for a really long time and it's been a long time since I made the first one. So today, um, my family and I, my mom, my brother and I are going on another one of our adventures around town. We have a whole new list of little library boxes little library boxes, little library boxes to check out. And I do have a big stack of books to unhaul. The goal today is definitely just to get rid of all my books I'm unhauling, like put them into the boxes around town um, and maybe to take some home. I really do not have very much room on my bookshelf. So this is probably gonna be more of a tour um, and I'll be able to show you guys the little boxes. We can go through the books in them and it'll just be fun. So let me show you what I'm unhauling before we hit the road. All right, it's quite a large stack today. So let me run these down for you. So first of all, we have Dracula by Bram Stoker. A lot of these are purely because I have them in nicer editions now and either I had multiple copies of them. So that's definitely the case for Dracula because I love this book. The same can be said for The Prince by Machiavelli. Um, I have read this as well, absolutely loved it, but I don't need two copies. Next we have The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. I'm not getting rid of this because I disliked it. I gave this like five stars, I think. There's honestly just a copy I've had my eye on that I really like the edition of, so that is why. Same with The Wind in the Willows because I love this little story so much. Um, and I really think it can make someone else very happy. It's a perfect cozy book for autumn too. This one though, this one I'm getting rid of simply because I really do not like it. And that is Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. Neil Gaiman is so hit or miss for me and Good Omens, I just really did not like this book at all. Did not get along with it. So this one is just plain old going. Oh God. <laughs> doesn't want to go. Wuthering Heights I also adore, but again, two copies. The Elliot Girls by Krista Bridge is a book that I've had on my shelf for so long, and I picked it up a few years ago, but now I don't think I would actually ever read this. This is a contemporary family drama about a mother and daughter's relationship in academia because her mother's a teacher and 15-year-old Audrey, her daughter, is now attending her school. Um, and I'm really just not interested, plain and simple. Ovid's Metamorphoses have a nicer edition. Then we have The Warrior Queens by Antonia Fraser, which again is um, just in the category of something I'm not interested in anymore. I got this thrifted a long time ago, and this is about like women around the world who have led their nations in war. Um, and that still does interest me, of course, but I would like a bigger biography on each of the women instead of just reading um, this anthology. And finally, we have The Italian by Anne Radcliffe. I have this in two copies. And Thucydides, The Peloponnesian War, um, which I again got in a bigger copy for my eyeballs, but this one just smells divine. This is like the best smelling book I have. So, okay, that is our big stack for today. There might be some more if we need to come back and grab some more books, but let's head out on the road. Smoke Mountain. Ah, oh. haunted night of the living dolls. Oh my gosh. Okay, then we. Ooh, what's this? <gasps> Is this a manga? Yatora is the perfect high school student with good grades and lots of friends. It's an effortless performance and ultimately a dull one, but he wanders into the art room one day and a lone painting captures his eye. <gasps> Okay, I think I'm gonna, I think this is what we're gonna take. I've never heard of Blue Period by Subasa Yamaguchi. Oh my gosh. Maybe I should yell at mom if she wants a time traveler's wife. Mom, do you want the time traveler's wife? Okay, we're gonna leave our three. This one's cute, listen to this noise. Is that a nice noise? Hey guys, here's the fit today. Got a nice little man bun and I'm wearing a cactus um, headband. All right, get in this car.
have Wuthering Heights Maze Runner. And You're getting rid of Wuthering Heights? Me. Well, I have another copy. It's okay. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you oh. know Wuthering Heights? I've known Wuthering Heights. Wuthering Heights. I don't know. For um, a long time. A long time. Like 10 years now. That's like a lot of your you life. Did a, suspiciously. You did a, you did a project on I, it. In yeah. like grade 8. I just saw Dune! It's Dune! Oh my gosh! Okay, so we're leaving these three, but oh my gosh. Come here, my child. Oh my gosh. Are you kidding? This is like a brand new... Okay. You guys are just looking at me like I'm an absolute idiot. What is this? Listening and study guide for the enjoyment of music. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look it. Oh, that is so cute. Okay. So. Oh, wow. Look at this Walt Whitman leaves of grass. Wow. Oh my gosh. That is gorgeous. This is really awkward. It's, mm. uh, it's Thanksgiving weekend and everyone's going to this person's house for Thanksgiving and I want to die a little bit. Oh. <gasps> okay, oh my gosh. This is a good one. Yukio Mishima, Life for Sale. I keep hoarding Mishima books on my shelf, but for some reason I've never read him. This is literally so awkward right now. Everyone's eating their pumpkin pie and I'm rifling through their books. We have If I Stay, which I've read. I loved this book in high school so much. Didn't they make a movie they about that? They did make a movie. They're saying about the girl who gets in the car accident yeah, and then a coma or something. Family. Yeah, Yeah. I keep seeing the Thorn Birds by Colleen McCullough everywhere. I don't know if I want to read it though, but this one's here. What is a sky guide? Oh, a field guide to the heavens. Oh, look. We have Sherlock Holmes, the complete novels and stories. Nice. And then we also have what looks like a horror, sleeping with a psychopath. All right, and then I'm gonna put mine up here. We have a little version of Charlotte's Web. How cute. We have Wish. Oh, this looks like it would make me cry. Oh my gosh. Charlie has been making the same secret wish every day since fourth grade. Until she meets Wishbone, a skinny stray dog who captures her heart. No, no. Okay, we have a really cool edition of King Arthur and his knights. Ooh. Wow, she's old, eh? Yeah. Okay, what is this? Oh, I thought that was a book. That is a piece of wood. Okay, and then over here. Oh, what is this? Aragorn who? We got another guest coming to this person's Thanksgiving dinner. I can't. We gotta get out of here. We gotta get out of Which one should I get? I'm like, grab the one you first grabbed. Leaves of grass? Or that one. Life for sale. Life for sale. Life for sale. But look at how gorgeous this is. Can I just take both? So far we we're having really good luck, very good book selection today. Maybe it was not the best day because everyone's been coming around to grandma's house and <laughs> not expecting to see book scavengers on the loose.
All right, so we've been to this one before, but since we were passing it, I uh, would just throw put something in it. Okay. So, oof. This is, this is a disappointment, what can I say? Look at this, though. We have historical fiction, Josephine. I'm seeing Great Expectations, very old copy. Um, this looks like thriller. Ooh, it is a very spooky autumn day right now. Let's go through, let's go through every single one. We have Leslie Pierce, Bell. All right, there's a mystery book way back here. The Day of the Storm. Survival Death Valley. And we have, oh, Silk Umbrella by Carolyn Marsden. What is this? Noi is learning to paint like her grandmother. She and her older sister, Tang, spent hours in the jungle entranced as they watched Kanya paint delicate silk umbrellas. I feel like this is maybe a middle grade. Woven with customs and language of Thailand, this evocative novel. Oh, this sounds nice. Hmm, okay, maybe, maybe. All right, then we have some kids books. This looks like a wild time. <laughs> All right, and then we have Shattered. Oh, I have a book from Anne Marie McDonald on my shelves. I have Fall on Your Knees, which I actually, we actually got last time we did one of these but this is The Way the Crow Flies. The Way the Crow Flies. This is another one about the Cold War, I believe. Maybe it's set in Canada. Oh yeah, this is in Ontario. <laughs> this sounds a lot like Camp X by Eric Walters. Do you remember reading that? I remember you trying to get me to read it. Okay. King Fisher's Catch Fire. Wow, very colorful. This one looks intriguing. <gasps> this one actually looks really cool. Patrick DeWitt, Under Major Domo Minor. Okay, this can be a maybe. <gasps> but then we have a Virginia Wolf. We have guys, this was a good trip. We have Night and Day by Virginia Wolf. What would you pick then? Um What are the options? Under Major Domo Minor and Night and Day. What what are they about? This one seems like it's a satire or like black comedy. Yes. Ink black comedy of manners. Yeah, I'd take that one then. Major Domo for Borden Castle. Okay, honestly, this one's about a castle, so maybe. But I feel bad leaving Virginia Wolf here. Check your legs. Maybe I'm alert. Oh my gosh, should I get oh allergic to this grass? Okay. All right, this is the last. Grass. There we go. This one. All right, it started to rain now, but here's our last box. Why are they all so cute? Like, people put so much wonderful effort. Okay. Oh, it smells good. Oh, this seems like a very fantasy neighborhood. Look at this. Robert Jordan. Oh, mom, look, it's for you. Emma, you're getting all the books right. Come on now. Okay, no, no. Oh, look, it's eating animals. I actually don't have a copy of Why this. Why is there a chunk out of it? Someone <laughs> ate it. Because they stopped eating an animals. Animal. <laughs> okay, this is the one. I didn't have a copy of this, but this is a very informative piece. I like animal. Uh, With a chunk out of it. With a chunk out of it. There is a cool little thing of thing. All right. Some nice steps. All right, good, good. In the window, get in the window. How do you feel about today's trip? Good, it was a good one. It was a good one? Mm -hmm, thank you. Yeah, Mom, I think you need to step still here. <laughs> Thank you.
Oh, Delicious that's... mixture and wine knowledge plays a critical role. Yeah. <laughs> wine lovers mystery series. Oh my goodness. <laughs> We got shared joy is double joy, a housewife's recipe for encouraging <laughs> others. There's a lot of mystery we books got, in this We one. got Dead in the Family. <gasps> what oh, is this that? actually a good find? No. <laughs> oh, it's it's a fairy book. It's about to say. It gave me Phantom of the Opera vibes, so I got excited. Oh. And the Oxford Murders. Wow. Is that? Is that Elijah Wood? It is. All right, hey, what's up? It's a few days later, um, and my books are finally out of the freezer. I put all the ones that I got from any little library in the freezer just to make sure no like book lice or other unwanted guests think this is like a hotel. I wanted to kind of finish this up with a little book haul from the libraries. It felt really good to kind of donate and get rid of all the books that have been cluttered in a big, huge pile for months now, um, literally since like right before the pandemic and to finally put them in new homes. And I did manage to get, I think five, no, six. So the first one was of course, Dune by Frank Herbert. I am so excited to have this. This is a big chunky book. I can't believe no one has read this. Like the spine is not cracked and you absolutely cannot read this one without cracking the spine. So um, that's amazing to find this in here, but I have had my audiobook hold for Dune come in about like four times now, but I keep putting it off because I keep seeing that it's like 25 hours or something like that. I'm just like not ready to commit, not ready to commit yet. Plus I haven't really been in the mood for sci-fi, but I think having like the physical copy will be really nice to follow along with. And then if I like it, I will for sure reread it and stuff like that. I really know next to nothing about this, except that we're following people who are working on a desert planet. It is so incredibly vague. I just know it's a classic piece of sci-fi. Definitely gonna be watching the movie when it comes out, but I would like to have this completed before I get into the film. Um, it's about Paul and of a great family's ambition to bring to fruition humankind's most ancient and unattainable dream. Peace? Is it peace? The next one I got, this one I've never heard of, but I was really intrigued by the cover. Like, look at this. Ooh. Also, I saw it was lined up for the Man Booker Prize as well as so many other awards. So this is Under Major Domo Minor by Patrick DeWitt. This sounds like a really dark satire. I know we're set in this like small village or small town and we're following a girl named Lucy and she's kind of like the odd duck of the place. She doesn't really fit in. She's also a compulsive liar and a sickly weakling in a town famous for begetting brutish giants. Then Lucy accepts employment, assisting the major domo of the remote foreboding castle. I don't know. It sounds kind of spooky because she goes to this castle and starts working for the major domo there, but they don't know where like the owner of the castle is or like what is going on in the castle. And so they're trying to find out. So it sounds really interesting, but that is that one I'll let you know. How it goes. And I could not, I could not leave the beautiful leaves of grass there. This is the really stunning Arcturus edition. It really nicely matches my bell jar edition, which is like tucked right there. You can't really see it. It's also the same color, but um, I have read Leaves of Grass. I do have the Penguin edition, but this is just, oh, this is the Deathbed edition, which was compiled like right before Walt Whitman died. He passed away in 1892 very peacefully and like one of the last things that he did was compile um, a collection of his poetry and so this one I think is actually a bit longer than the edition that I have but I would love to reread this. It's been a long time. I first read Leaves of Grass in high school and I know I would appreciate it so much more now so cannot wait to get into this collection of poetry and I highly highly recommend um, so that is Leaves of Grass. Then I picked up a manga that I never heard of before and that is Blue Period Volume 1 by Subasa Yamaguchi. This was really intriguing because I was like looking through it and it's all about this boy's kind of descent and obsession with art. Um, I think it's set in high school. Yeah, he is. He has good grades. He's a lot of friends. He's like the perfect student, but then he starts to get obsessed with art and he's never kind of gotten into that world before. Says he's about to learn how savage and unforgiving art can be. I'm excited. So essentially I think he gets like sucked into this world of art. I have no idea. I've never heard of this. So I'm just gonna give it a shot. Um, I've 
I've pretty much gone through all the manga that I own and read now, so very happy to have another edition. If anyone has read this, please let me know. Um, I don't even know when this came out. The English translation of this actually came out in 2020 and then the Japanese in 2017, so it's a fairly new manga, but if anyone has read the series, please let me know. And then the last two I got, I picked this up just now when I took it out of the freezer, and I just, <laughs> just realized the first 10 pages are missing. Like, someone has taken them out. I don't know for what purpose, and obviously someone, like, you know, ripped this, but that's okay. I guess it'll be a mystery, but this is Eating Animals. This is a pretty influential piece of nonfiction that was not on my shelves yet, but this is all about Jonathan, the author, um, his descent into why we eat animals, how we eat them. It examines factory farming pretty heavily, I believe. It goes into why we eat some animals and why we don't eat others, like your dog or cat that you probably have beside you right now um and why we do the things we do to animals and what that means i think in terms of like our own psyche um i hope it i don't know if it discusses the environment or not but that would be interesting um this is gonna be really hard this is gonna be so hard to read i don't think it's gonna present me with any like new information of terror that i haven't already read but um, this has been such an influential piece of literature, so definitely happy to have this. And then the last one, um, I keep saying there's so much Mishima on my shelves already, but I just keep adding to the Mishima collection and not reading any of them. At this point, I don't know what to start with. So as of right now, I have Life for Sale, which is the one I picked up in the box. And then I also have Confessions of a Mask, Thirst for Love, and The Sailor Who Fell from Grace with the Sea. So that's four. Where should I start? If you are a Mishima expert, or if you've just read any of them, where do I start? I kind of want to start with Confessions of a Mask, but this one sounds really intriguing and just amazing. So basically, we have a botched suicide attempt from a salary man living in Tokyo, and then he decides to put his life up for sale in the newspaper. Um, and interested parties come calling with increasingly bizarre requests. And what follows is a madcap comedy of errors involving a jealous husband, a drug addled, heiress, poisoned carrots, and even a vampire. For someone who just wants to die, Hanio can't seem to catch a break. I'm really looking forward to this. So that is the little, that is the little stack of books I got from the library. I cannot wait to go and throw more of my books at little free libraries in the future because I definitely need to do a comb through through my shelves again. But that was this episode and I know you guys have been screaming at me to do another one. So I hope you enjoyed. Um, as always, like there is a little free library website where you can actually just go on and search your area. Like it's, I'm pretty sure, I don't know how far the map extends, but you can just search your postal code or your address and then see if there's any in your city, which was really helpful. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a really spectacular day ahead of you. So ciao.